Can I just confirm? Can everybody see my slide? You can all see my slide. You can all hear me clearly. Okay, clear naman. Nag-concert, concertan kasi ako gabi. Baka paus na ako konti. So, let's start our discussion. So, hematological, routine hematological procedure. So, when I say routine, these are not the special ones. Routine meaning to say these are the day-to-day -day tests that is being requested inside the laboratory. So, again, good afternoon to everyone. I hope everybody is already awake. So, gising-gising na. So, Let's start with the first one. Let's start with the first one and the most basic of them all, which is your peripheral blood films, okay? Your peripheral blood films or peripheral blood smear. So peripheral blood smear are made from fresh drop of capillary blood without anticoagulant or anticoagulation, or it can actually be prepared using a fresh venous sample Collected in, um, collected in your EDTA within two to three hours of collection. So two to three hours of collection. Sir, why two, two, two to three hours of collection? I want you to write it down um, below your notes. It's because um, past three hours, okay, after three hours, your RBC, your cells in general, will start to lose their shape, okay? Uh, they will start to lose their shape. And that is very important when, if you are going to check your peripheral blood smear. Why? Because your peripheral blood smear, as you all know, diba? what are the things that we're going to, to check on your peripheral blood smear? And aside from the count of your cells, we also do check about the presence of anisocytosis or the variation in their sizes. But above all, we also, we also check on poikilocytosis. If there is a presence of poikilocytosis, what is poikilocytosis again? Poikilocytosis is the variation in your shapes. P shapes poikilocytosis. Okay? So, please do take note that blood films from EDTA that remain at room temperature um, for more than five hours would now produce your artifacts. So, what artifacts are you talking about? Artifacts, meaning to say, um, it could be your RBC being um, deformed already. And if that happened, you can actually misdiagnose it for having poikilocytosis. Okay? So, if napakahalaga for you to remember EDTA is the way to go. Okay? Two to three hours after collection, it should already be prepared. Okay? So, um, as you can see, there are two ways on how you can prepare your peripheral blood smear. One, using your fresh capillary blood, and the other one is your peripheral blood smear. What is the advantages of using your peripheral blood, um, preparing your peripheral blood smear using a fresh, diba, a fresh drop of capillary blood? So the first one. So first and foremost, um, it would give us the best evaluation of the blood cell morphology, okay? The blood cell morphology. Remember that th this doesn't contain any anticoagulant, okay? This doesn't contain any anticoagulant. So, wala yung factor ng um, anticoagulant to blood ratio, wala yung factor ng inversion. So, all of those things could participate kasi or can um, contribute to the um, what do you call this, to the um, errors in your peripheral blood smear. But if you're going to use your um, fresh capillary blood, then you can actually have the best um, blood cell morphology in that. Okay? Um, having said that, um, we can also prevent some artifacts by um, using your capillary blood and by not using your EDTA. Okay, and aside from that, it can be made right, um, it can be made bedside. So meaning to say, at the patient's side, you can um, perform the test immediately. But, okay, this is one thing na um, the, one of the greatest disadvantage of the capillary blood on the other hand. Um, remember that a capillary blood is just a one drop of blood, okay? One drop of blood. So it's a hit or miss. So... Lalo na ako, um, I'll be honest with you guys na to say that I don't always make the perfect peripheral blood smear. I don't always um, make the best smear right at my first try, okay? 
right at, at my first try. So, usually talaga, makakailang ulit pa ako. And you don't want that to your patient. Ilang ulit mo, sampu yung daliri niya. Okay, sampu yung daliri niya. Lahat na prick mo kasi kailangan mo ng fresh capillary blood. Of course, that's not, ano, that's not acceptable. So, it's very important, okay, it's very important to remember that, okay? So, having said that now, sabi ni Sir, ang capillary blood, hindi ako pwedeng makagawa ng multiple peripheral blood smear. I cannot create multiple peripheral blood smear. And that is now the advantage that your EDTA is giving you, okay? That is one of the advantage that your EDTA um, blood is providing you. So, aside from it, you can prepare multiple slides from your EDTA tube, okay? You can also prepare it at a later time. So, what, what do I mean by a later time? Within two to three hours, okay? Within two to three hours. But, okay, um, aside from aside from all of those two, ano pa yung advantage ni EDTA? It prevents the, what? It prevents platelet clumping. Okay? It prevents platelet clumping. You should all know that when you do your capillary blood, when you prick your your finger to collect your blood, platelets can automatically aggregate, okay? Platelets can automatically aggregate. What do you mean by aggregate, sir? Siyempre, sugat yan. Anong nangyayari pag may sugat? Nagsisil agad yan para i-prevent yung further loss of blood, okay? Yung further loss of blood. Much of those topic in your hematology too, okay? And we will see each other there. Yeah, the entire one to four. So, we'll see each other in HEMA 2. So, doon na lang natin yung pag-uusapan. So, your, your EDTA tubes, okay, prevents platelet clumping. Okay? It prevents platelet clumping. So, um, even though it prevents platelet clumping, okay, even though it prevents platelet clumping, meron namang problem na um, idiopathic by nature. Meaning to say, wala talaga siyang direct um direct cause although they are attributing it to EDTA but it doesn't always happen to each and every individual and what is that we call it platelet salita, sa, um platelet satellitism okay and platelet satellitism is one of the advantage of using EDTA um in peripheral blood smear so platelet satellitism or platelet satellitosis um, those can be interchangeable, guys. So this is EDTA-induced platelet clumping, okay? This is a plate, um, EDTA-induced platelet clumping. Again, let me just, um, let me just, um, clear the air, ha, for EDTA. This doesn't happen for every individual. So this is just a phenomenon, okay? This is a phenomenon where your platelets aggregate on your neutrophil, okay? Your platelet aggregate on your neutrophil. Oh, sir, pa pakiulit, ano po ulit yung platelet satellitism? Platelet satellitism is a phenomenon in which your, your platelets will actually surround your neutrophil, okay? Kaya siya tinawag na satellitism. So it's, it seems like your platelet surrounded your neutrophil, okay? surrounded your neutrophil. So this is a for me um this is how it looks like. Ayan. So this is a um an animated um uh, an animated figure. So you, as you can see, your platelet here, okay, your platelet here adhered to your neutrophil. And ito yung itsura niya under your peripheral blood smear. Can everybody see it on the screen right now? Can I just see a raise of hands on 0102? Okay. Kasi sa O1, wala, walang naka-on ng cam. Okay, thank you so much. So, there. There. So, you can see that the, um, your platelets, okay, your platelets surrounded your neutrophil, okay? Your platelets surrounded your neutrophil. So, this is what we call platelet satellitism or platelet satellitosis, okay? Platelet satellitism or platelet satellitosis, Okay. Guys, isang power, isang slide lang to pero ang dami ko nang pwedeng sabihin. And let me go ahead and start with those things, okay? So in platelet satellitism, what will happen? Okay, what will happen? Dahil dumikit, dahil dumikit yung platelet mo sa WBC on your automate um automated machine that will count your platelet. Ano what what is the level of 
platelet I am expecting? Is it high or low? Thumbs up if high, thumbs down if low. It, it, will it be high or will it be low? Okay, kawawa naman po yung mga naka-on yung camera kasi sila yung tinitignan niyo, sir. Okay? Will it be high or will it be low? Okay, Jordan, thumbs down. Azzy, thumbs down. Si Mika si si Mikaela wala ay nagtatago na. Okay. Thumbs up, thumbs down. High or low? Okay, nag-raise ng hand si Louie. Okay. Sila Alberto. The answer is it will be falsely low. Okay? It will be falsely low. And what do we call that? That is pseudo thrombocytopenia which is false decrease in your platelet count. Sir, bakit po bumaba yung um, platelet count? Because your machine can no longer count your platelet individually. Okay? Your machine can no longer count your platelet individually. Bakit, sir? Saan ba napunta si platelet? Napunta siya kanino? Sa paligid ni neutrophil. Are we clear with that? Are we clear? Hello? Can I see a raise of hand if I'm clear? So I can move on in sa platelet, platelet satellitosis. So remember that ha, in platelet satellitosis, my platelets adhere to the um, to the membrane of my neutrophil, causing now a falsely low platelet count. Okay? Causing now a falsely low platelet count. Sir, how can I prevent it? Diba, as, as a medical technologist, that is what you want to do to prevent platelet satellitosis. Number one on how you, you can prevent it is um, in cases na may platelet satellitosis in using your EDTA, you can re-extract blood. Okay? You have to recollect blood. And if you're going to recollect blood, blood, you will no longer use your EDTA. Instead, what you're going to use is your sodium citrate, your light blue top. Okay? Sir, ano po ulit? In cases that your 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 uh, peripheral blood smear had a platelet satellitosis when you use your EDTA, what you can do is to recollect a blood, oh, scenario na yan para sa case study, to recollect a blood using your sodium citrate. Sir, when I measure it, yun na siya agad? Hindi po. Okay? Um, what you're going to do is to, um, di ba nag-collect ka na ng blood using your sodium citrate? That sodium citrate now will be used in counting my entire complete blood count or just my platelet. Anyone? Will I use the values um, di ba nag-collect ako ng EDTA, nag-collect ako sa site, sodium citrate. Ang problem ko lang sa EDTA was the platelet. But now, sabi ko nga, mag-recollect ka ng blood. Ngayon, meron ka ng sodium citrate. That sodium citrate will be used in counting the complete blood count or just the platelet. Platelet or complete blood count. Okay, titignan ko po. Okay, may sumagot. Sagot ni Gab. Is platelet count? How about the others? Sagot ni Gab, platelet count daw. What about the others? Ang sagot nila ay platelet count. Okay? Ang sagot nila ay platelet count. Which is correct. That is only for your platelet count. Okay? That is only for your platelet count. But please do remember that you have to multiply the platelet count with its correct um. What do you call this? Um, corrective fa correction factor. Okay? May correction factor tayo na 1.1. Okay? Na 1.1. Again, 1.1. So take for example, um, there's platelet satellitism. Nag-recollect ka ng blood using your sodium citrate. Now, your sodium citrate, you measured your, you measured your platelet and then ang result is 90. Okay? So, syempre, nilalabas ko rin calculator ko kasi hindi ko siya mamumultiply. Okay? So, 90 times 1.1. Yun yung magiging answer natin. That will be the final count of your platelet. Okay? So, 90 times 1.1. Asa na po yung mga mathematician natin dyan? Okay? 90 times 1.1. The answer is 99. 
Okay? The correct answer is 99. Okay? And maybe some of you, sir, bakit po may, may correction factor? It is because of the dilution created by your sodium citrate. Okay? It is because of the dilution created by your sodium citrate. Okay? Are we clear so far? Are we clear? Hello? Hello? Are we clear? Okay. So, nakaka-follow pa ba? Okay. So, moving forward now, after platelet satellite, uh, uh, so that is your peripheral blood smear. Okay. So, there are different methods of how you can prepare your peripheral blood smear. It can be a manual wedge. It can be a cover, um, cover glass method or an automated slide making and staining. So, meron ng automated. Okay. Sir, bakit pa po kailangan namin matutunan yung... Bakit kailangan pa po namin matutunan yung manual? Kasi hindi po lahat ng hospital ay katulad ng St. Luke's na merong autom automated na smear preparator. Okay? So, ang nangyayari, take for example, when I was in, ano, alam nyo ba, when I was in, when I was in my internship, meron pa akong lock, meron pa akong swerteng glass, parang ano siya, glass slide. Yung glass slide na yon yung smooth siya on both edges smooth siya on both edges so that I would use that in preparing my blood smear. Okay? In preparing my blood smear. So, moving forward now, let's um, go to the different methods. We have three. The manual wedge technique, the cover glass method, and the automated slide making and staining. So, obviously, okay, obviously, um, the most commonly used in the laboratory is your wedge technique okay your manual wedge technique in your manual wedge technique you are using two types okay you're using two slides okay one would be the spreader and one one would be the blood film slide okay one would be the blood film slide so always remember this guys okay when it comes to manual wedge technique okay there should always be an angle of 30 to 45 degrees Okay, 30 to 45 degrees angle for your manual wedge technique. Okay, 30 to 45 degrees. So, later on, um, we will do some, um, tawag dito? Some, we will actually do some um, comparison on when to, um, increase it or when to decrease those angles. Okay? Mamaya, um, share ko sa inyo yung bakit kailangan um, ganito, yung, ano, ganito yung level. Okay? So, makikisulat na lang po sa inyong mga um, notes or sa mga papers ninyo. Okay? That when doing your, ano, when doing your peripheral blood smear, this is in general, um, whether manual, cover, or automated, you have to look at the, ano, you have to look at the hematocrit of the patient, okay? You have to look at the hematocrit of the patient because sometimes, okay, um, the hematocrit of your patient would greatly affect whether or not you're gonna prepare a thick smear or a thin smear, okay? A thick smear or a thin smear. Ano yung mga pagkakataon na um, kailangan i-decrease or i-increase natin yung ating um, angle. Okay? Yung angle ng ating spreader against our blood film slide. So, sometimes, number one, you have to um, decrease the angle if you have high hematocrit level. Pag mataas si hematocrit, inversely proportional si angle. It's just simple as that. Okay? So, meaning to say, kunwari, um, mataas yung, yung hematocrit mo, you have to lower down your angle as low as 25 degrees na angle. Are we clear? 25 degrees angle. But, okay, but on the other hand, if your hematocrit is so low, you have to increase the angle. Okay? So, how can you remember it better? Angle and hematocrit are inversely proportional. Okay? If my hematocrit is high, I need to decrease the angle. If my hematocrit is low, like in anemia, I need to increase my angle. Okay? I need to increase my angle. So moving forward, that is for the that is one for for your angles. Okay? That is one for your angle. So 
let us move on with your um let us move on first to your uh, manual wedge technique okay in your manual wedge technique again this is the most common and the most convenient one that is being used currently up to date okay up to date so one thing that i want you to remember with regards to i know one, one thing that i want you to remember about manual wedge technique is that it employs a two three inch to one inch clean glass slide so yung clean glass slide natin yung gagamitin natin okay again dalawa yung glass slide na meron ka dyan, okay one is the spreader and the other one is your um is your blood film slide and please 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 okay write this down okay write these numbers down all of these are numbers but these are very important um, numbers that I want you to remember. Aside from the angle na 30 to 45 degrees, I also want you to remember number one. Okay. Wait lang. Hinahanap ko yung reviewer ko nung boards. Okay. Number one. Okay. Number one. The drop of blood. Okay. Nakikita nyo tong drop of blood na nakalagay dito. Look at your screen. The drop, the drop of blood should be one centimeter away from your label. Okay? The drop of blood should be one centimeter away from your label. Okay? Another thing. The drop of blood should be approximately two to three millimeter in diameter. Sir, ginagawa pa ba yan talaga? Minimeasure pa na 2 to 3 millimeter. Millimeter ha? 2 to 3 millimeter in diameter yung drop of blood. In reality, it's just an approximation. Okay? Tansya-tansya lang. Patsyam kung tutuusin. Okay? So, um, that's what you're going to do ha? Okay? Aside from the 30, uh, aside from the 30 to 45 degree angle, I need you to remember that the, the drop of blood should be one centimeter away from your label and the diameter of the drop of blood should be around two to three millimeter. Two to three millimeter. Okay. So moving forward, okay? Moving forward. Did everybody um, nakuha ba natin lahat yon? Can I see a thumbs up if yes? Hello? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So... Ayan, so that is for your manual wedge technique, okay? For your manual wedge technique. Again, you can prepare both thick and thin smear here. That is being used for your malaria. I don't know if you can still remember your CPH, okay? But we are using your uh, manual wedge technique and preparing that, okay? Next is we go now to your cover slip method or cover slip technique, also known as your early age method. So here, okay? It requires small drop of blood or a bone marrow. So having said that now, this method is actually being um, commonly used for your bone marrow um, bone marrow smear. Okay? In your bone marrow smear. I guess in your um, in your histopath, you did discuss some of this as well. Like yung impression smear, yung mga crush, di ba? Yung mga ganon. So this one is an example. If it is a bone marrow, crush siya. Because you're gonna um put the the specimen in between two slides and then is ipaghihiwalay niyo lang siyang ganun then that's it that's already the smear okay so the cover sleeve technique requires a small blood of draw, blood or bone marrow placed in one cover sleeve okay and then another cover sleeve on top so ganun lang and then you're gonna ano lang you're gonna pull one cover sleeve preferably the one on top and then that's already your smear okay that is already your smear so usually cover slip technique is done for your bone marrow smear preparation okay bone marrow um preparation so there are two types um there are two types of cover slip technique if you are using both uh two cover slip if you're using two cover slip we call it Ehrlich method okay we call it Ehrlich method so, right, cover slip to cover slip Ehrlich method but if it is a cover slip and uh, if it is a glass slide and then on top of it is a cover slip, we call it your BCOMS method. Okay? Your BCOMS method. B E A C O M, BCOMS method. Okay? BCOMS method. So Ehrlich and BCOMS. Okay? So that is for your peripheral smear. Moving forward now, 
is your automated one. Okay? The automated one, uh, it's an, ex an example of this is your Sysmex SP-10 that prepares near after blood sample was analyzed. So the amount of blood, the angle, speed are all based with your are all based with your uh, what do you call this? Are all based with your hematocrit value. Okay? So pakikitandaan po ako nun, ha? It's based on your hematocrit. Okay? It's based on your hematocrit. Okay? Based on your hematocrit. So Having said that now, okay, having said that now, let's just go through it quickly. How does a blood film is being prepared? I guess um, if you answered your lab manual already, you'll be able to identify some of this. So you have all your material. So usually, ayan, um, you put a drop of blood, 2 to 3 millimeter in diameter, 1 half inch from the frosted area of the clean glass slide that is approximately one centimeter, okay, one centimeter away from your label. So, um, different, um, you have your different state um, dispenser. So if the drop is too large, okay, if you have, if you had a two, if your drop is too large, meaning to say greater than three millimeter, okay, greater than three millimeter, your peripheral blood smear would be longer and will be thicker. Okay, and you don't want that. Okay, kasi lalampas siya dun sa slide. Mamaya, mapapakita kong mga examples sa inyo. If it is too small naman, it would be very thin and it will just be very short. Okay, and you also don't want that. That's why the optimum should around be should be around 2 to 3 millimeters in diameter. Okay, in addition to that, with a 30 to 45 degree angle, ayan, it should be a finger shape Okay, a finger shape um, smear. Okay? A finger shape in Rodak, it was actually even bullet shape or tongue shape. Okay, tongue shape or bullet shape. Okay, so um, imagine your finger right now. Ayan, if you uh, make an impression on a surface, yung shape na yon, dapat ganun yung shape ng, ng, ng smear natin. Okay, ganun yung smear natin. And I guess some of you already did this. Um, in your anatomy and physiology before because I we assisted doc I remember assisting Doc Polito before in her experiment. Sinamahan namin si Doc Polito. So she was performing uh, I think it's an O2 ata. Sa O ay sa O2 ba yun, sa O1 basta yon. Um di ba nakita niyo doon how how difficult it is to prepare a perfect slide. Di ba? So ayan. So again, if hematocrit is higher, lower angle so, ayan, ito siguro ang kailangan kong isabihin pang isa. The slide should be rapidly air-dried. Okay, air-dried and stained with a Romanowski stain, which is typically a right Jimsa stain. Okay? A right Jimsa stain. Later, pag-usapan din natin yung mga, mga yung stain na kailangan dito. When I say rapid air-dry, hindi po nyo itatapat yan sa aircon at hindi nyo rin po itatapat sa Hindi nyo rin po hihipan. Okay? Kasi baka ang, ang susunod na natin makita sa peripheral blood smear is yung mga epithelial cells na tumalsek sa laway mo. Okay? So don't um, blow dry your, ano, do not blow dry your, ano, your smear. Okay? So this is how it looks like. Ayan. So, ah, okay? So this is the frosted area where your um, label will be placed. So one centimeter away, your two to three millimeter blood and then you would um you would prepare now your smear okay this is the head this is the body and this is the tail in the body you would actually um would have a hard time looking at um at your cells kasi the cells here overlap okay the cells here overlap that's why okay that's why the best okay the best area on where you can assess your peripheral blood smear is on your zone of morphology okay in your zone of morphology. In some references, you would actually see this as the feathery edge. Okay? As the feathery edge. Makikisulat po ako doon as the feathery edge. So you will be able to um, see each cell if properly, their morphology, in the overlap, in the patong-patong, on the zone of morphology eh, or the feathery edge. Okay? On the feathery edge. So, the zone of morphology, ayan, should be at least two to two centimeter in length. 
this one, okay? So, this is where you would perform your um, peripheral blood smear reading. Okay, dyan ka magbabasa. Okay? So, um, please do remember, okay, please do remember the features of a properly prepared or a well-made, uh, a well, a well-made peripheral blood smear. Number one, ayan. Number one, it should occupy two to three fourths of your, of your, ano, two to three fourths of your slide. Okay? Two to three fourths of your slide. Sir, parang ang daming susulatin. Kung binanownload mo yung PowerPoint, nandun yan sa notes. Nakita nyo ba yung sa notes? Kasi nandun yun kay Roda. Na kay Roda, naka-box type yan kay Roda. Eh, kung, ayan. So, two to three fourths dapat yung length. Okay? Two to three fourths yung length ng slide, ng smear. Okay? Two to three fourths. The film or the blood film should be, um, the, the blood film should be finger shape finger shape tongue shape or ayan pala not bullet shape dapat yung sinabi ko so finger shape siya dapat basta parang you know yung parang dulo niya na pag ano hindi siya pointed so the blood film should be finger shape uh, very slightly rounded on the feather edge and not bullet shape ayan not bullet shape so let me retract my statement not bullet shape okay the lateral edge ayan should be of the film should also be visible Ayan. Ah, uh, walang area, walang irregularities, walang hole. Hindi hindi kayo ano, hindi kayo nag-prepare ng blood smear na na pagka smear mo ganun, ah, ay wait lang parang di ako sure. Tapos tinuloy mo, ay wait lang ulit. Hindi po ganun. Hindi siya staggered, okay? Hindi dapat staggered. Hindi yan ano, once you kailangan once na gumalaw ka, kailangan mong panindigan yung decision mo. Okay? And aside from that, okay, when you put up your ano, yung yung slide mo, dun sa feathery edge, there is a rainbow appearance. Okay? There is a rainbow appearance on the, um, tawag dito, on the edge. Ito. Pag inano mo yung sa, sa light, you can see a um, rainbow appearance on the feathery edge. So these are the things that you should never do, okay, inside the laboratory when preparing a blood smear. Just mind you, alam mo ba, may laitan ang mga interns. Okay? Kapag magpe-prepare ka ng, ng peripheral blood smear. May mga ganun talaga. Well, that's life. Diba? Try, they will try to compare everyone. Kunwari, magpe-prepare ng blood smear. Tapos, paano mag-prepare ng blood smear? Pag yun tinanong mo sa internship, nako. Diba? Ikaw na ang, ang topic ng buong hematology section later. So, again, guys, paano mag-prepare ng blood smear? You have your slide, you have your spreader, and then you prepare a drop of blood. Okay? Usually, para nat natatansya namin, yung applicator stick, sasaw-saw namin yung applicator stick, tapos yung dulo nun, yun na yung 2 to 3 millimeter. Okay? Letter A is a no-no. Letter B, ayan yung staggered. Hindi po to, ano ha, lipstick stick, parang mukha siyang lipstick, ano. Yung pag nag-check ka ng mga lipstick, okay, yung shade ng lipstick, hindi ganyan, okay? Hindi rin po ganito. This is not 2 to 3 fourths, especially this one. So, upon looking at this one, no, Upon looking at this one, I can say na the drop was less than 2 mm. Nakita nyo? Um, I think this is less than 2 mm. Kasi it, it didn't even reach the um, two, uh, 3 fourths ng ating slide. Ito naman, hindi din po pwede. Why? Because you have to wait kasi na mag-spread yung blood muna side by side. Ito, dineretso niya. Ito may holes, hindi rin po pwede yan. Ito hindi siya finger shape. Hindi siya tongue shape, hindi siya finger shape. Kung ahas yan, siguro ganyan yung, yung dila ng ahas, pero hindi dila ng ahas yung basihan natin, kung di, dila ng tao. Okay? So, hindi yan tongue hindi yan, this is wrong, especially, this is also wrong. Okay? You cannot, um, you cannot perform, you cannot, uh, we cannot do, use this one. Okay? So, all of this have different, um, have different, um, causes. So, minsan mali yung motion, ma masyadong madiin, masyadong magaan, um, there is a presence of oil, okay, presence of oil in your in your slide. That would all be the the causes of your um the causes of uh, the, these peripheral blood smear abnormalities. And I would just I uh, know, I uh, I will not go into I will not be reading the reasons of A to H 
anymore. I would just be sending you the page number later. Okay, I will just be sending you the page number of your of your uh, page number in your product, and please do read the reasons and to why such scenarios happen. Okay, kasi pwede ko na tong ilabas sa exam. Okay, di ba? Ilang ilang items na yan? Nine items na yan agad. So, which of the following is the cause of what each? Okay, so please take note of that. And of course, what are the different factors affecting your peripheral blood smear preparation? We have passed the pressure, the angle, the spread, and the speed rather, and the size of blood. Okay, if you have um, tawag dito, you would you would prepare a thick smear if your pressure is too low. Parang ang gaan-gaan, parang ayoko masaktan yung smear. Okay, so pag masyado tayong pabebe, masyadong, mani masyadong thin naman yung, masyadong thick yung smear na mapaprepare natin. Okay, so if the, uh, if the angle naman, uh, you will prepare a, um, a thick smear if the pressure is low, the angle is too high, okay, the angle is too high, this is ref um, assuming na normal yung hematocrit natin dito ha. The spread is too fa the yung speed mo masyado mabilis ay nagmamadali, di ba? Stat po kasi sir, oh, di ba? Stat ka din. Adi, thick smear yung mapre-prepare mo. Size of blood mo is too high. So greater than 3 mm. Okay? Thin smear naman, all of the opposite. Okay? All of the opposite. So, again, please remember past. Okay? Please remember past which are the four factors affecting your peripheral blood smear, which are pressure, angle, speed, and size of the size of the drop of blood. Okay? So moving forward, let's go to the, the drying. Okay? Let's go to the drying of your peripheral blood smear. Okay? The drying of your peripheral blood smear. So it should be um, dried as quickly as possible. You can use your fan, but not directly na, okay, nandun yung fan, tapos nilagay mo na dun yung, yung slide. Cannot be. Okay? Do not blow on the slide, kasi yung laway mo, kapatid. Okay? Kung yung, kap yung katabi mo nga, ayaw niyang, ayaw, ayaw niyang hingahan mo siya. Okay? Lalong-lalo na rin yung peripheral blood smear. Okay? Water or drying artifacts um, could cause your RBC to deform. Okay? Water or drying artifacts could um, could cause your RBC to um, to also be crenated. Ayan, mag ma lost yung ano nila yung central pallor nila. So there are a lot of um, things to consider in drying. Okay, so kahit naman perfect na yung nagawa mo, mali naman yung pagkakapatuyo mo, wala rin. Okay, so so after drying, kunwari, ayan, nakapag-prepare ka na ng slide, nag-collect ka na ng blood, nakapag-prepare ka na ng slide, perfect yung slide mo, napatuyo mo na yung slide, anong gagawin mo next? Siyempre, you will stain your slide. Bakit kailangan natin siya stain? That um, para ma-identify mo yung iyong mga blood cells. Okay? So dito na po papasok si Salmon Pink ni Red Blood Cells. So moving forward, um, we have four um four solutions in your stain we have your methanol uh in general ganito na lang we have your fixative we have your acidic dye we have your basic dye and we have your buffer yun yung apat and to be more specific we have your methanol which is your wood alcohol okay tama ba in your histopath your eosin your methylene blue and your buffer your fixative is a meth uh, methanol. The acidic dye is your eosin. This is colored red. Okay. The methylene. Okay. The methylene. The methylene blue. Obviously, is colored blue. Okay. And it is a basic dye. Okay. It's a basic dye. What about the buffer? The buffer can be a point uh, zero five molar of sodium phosphate, which has a pH of six point four, or you can have an aged distilled water with a pH of ranging from 6.4 to 6.8. Sir, um, can you elaborate more on the um, aged distilled water? Aged distilled water is a distilled water na you let it stand lang for 24 hours or more. Okay? 24 hours or more. Yun yung tinatawag nating aged distilled water. Hindi yung, kunwari, ay, Sir Bernard, okay, kunwari, nandun tayo sa lab. Sir Bernard, wala pong 
aged distilled water. Hindi ka kukuha ng distilled water lang. You would get an aged distilled water. Why aged distilled water? Because the pH is very important. Okay? The pH is very important. So please do remember this, guys. Okay? Please remember that your eosin dye is your acidic acidic dye. Um, and this will be attracted by your basic um, alkaline component. Okay? Pag sinabi kong alkaline component, ito yung cytoplasm mo, yung mga granule, yung ibang, kunwari, pag yung yung nukle, yung yung ano ba example natin ng, ng ayan, ng mga basic, yung proteins, yung mga granules mo, ang i-absorb nila is yung eosin, yung acidic dye natin. Basta ganito siya, guys. Okay? Parang clear lang tayo. It's always the opposite. Okay? It's always the opposite. If it is a basic component of the cell, okay, if it is a basic component of the cell, pag sinabi kong basic, alkaline component of the cell, ang i-attract niya, ang i-absorb niya na stain is your eosin. Pag um, acidic naman yung component ng cell, like your nucleic acid, yung mga ganyan, ang i-attract naman niya is yung basic dye. That's why, as you can see, your nucleus is colored blue. Okay? Your, 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 your nucleus is colored blue, purple to blue. It's because of your, um, it is because of your, um, methylene blue. Question. Okay. Ito medyo malayo-layo na tong recall question ko nang itatanong sa inyo, no? Pero tignan ko lang kung makakasagot. What type of leukocytes is called the robin blue egg? Robin blue egg lymph uh, leukocytes. Robin blue egg leukocyte. What is that? Chat box. O sige, yung makakasagot may plus one sa quiz. Aha, may sumag... Oh, yung una lang ha, yung pinakauna lang. According to timestamp. Okay. On the other section, kunwari pag may dalawang... May sumagot dito, um, si Imperial at 348, lymphocytes po. Okay, 348, si... Ejan, 348 din, okay? 348. So, Navarete, 348, okay? Telebrico, 348. Ordaneta, 348. At lahat sila pare-pare na 348. Polion, 348. Angeles, 348. Davis, 348. Guevara, 348. So, ayan. Zion, ah, 349 yung lymphocytes mo. Okay, so cut off na po mga kapatid, 348. So lahat ng nag-348, um, may plus points doon sa quiz. Next meeting. Okay, may plus kayo sa sa score natin. So let me just jot that down um, shortly, no? later na lang. So, ayan, so congratulations. So ganyan na lang para mag-resite kayong lahat. Okay, so, ayan, so moving forward, and we have a manual we also have a manual um, way of doing your 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 smear so you can flood the right stain okay you can una muna you will flood the stay the slide with your fixative laging ganun guys ha fixative eosin okay fixative eosin meth uh, methylene blue and then your buffer okay and then your buffer if you have your vias pagdating sa gram stain, important din yung sequence na to pagdating sa peripheral guts, sa staining. Okay? So, um, you will, in the manual technique, you would allow 1 to 3 minutes na mag ano, 1 to 3 minutes dapat yung ano, 1 to 3 minutes dapat na nag uh, ano, nabababad yung slide. Okay? So, you ought to have your automated, so this is um, generally 5 to 10 minutes of stain per batch per batch ito so meaning to say it can prepare at mga less than 20 or great, less than 20 20 and up na slides okay and we also have your quick technique the quick technique is a 1 minute process only so ito naman dip dip lang okay dip lang okay so 1 2 3 4 5 lipat 1 2 3 4 5 so the sequence in the quick technique is 5 5 25 5 okay 
5-5-25-5. So, important pa po bang tandaan yan? Okay? 5-5-25-5. Yes, important pong tandaan yan. So, moving forward, we also have here the different characteristic now of a well-stained smear. Okay? How do, how will I be able, okay? How will I be able to check if that is really a very good na peripheral blood smear, okay? How would I say na na that is a good peripheral peripheral smear? So number one, okay? Number one, um, ang unang-unang yung titignan is syempre yung color ng smear mo itself, okay? Yung color ng smear mo. Yung color ng smear mo should not be red and should not be blue. It should be something in the middle, okay? It should be something in the middle. So, to be to to be more specific, ayan, to be more specific, macroscopically, ayan, kung makikita niyo yung notes ko, ayan, kung makikita niyo yung notes ko, it should be a purple, pink to purple. Ganito yung ano niya. Transition siya na pink to purple. I don't know if you guys would can see it, but it is a pink to purple na, kita niyo ba? Ba't hindi ka nalang kasi mag-screen share, sir? Basta ganyan, pink to purple siya na ano, pink to purple yung color ng ating smear. Okay? Pink to purple. And guys, please do remember the colors of your, ay nandito pala, macroscopic, pink to purple. Pink to purple. And then RBC should be salmon pink to orange. Okay? Salmon pink for RBC. Bakit ganun ko pronounce? Kasi ganun siya pronounce ng professor ko ng hematology one dati. So nadaladala ko siya hanggang sa nag-board exam. So salmon pink. Okay? So parang yung patalastas lang siya ng parang salon pas ata yun, basta gano'n. So, WBC, the nuclei should be purple to blue. The cytoplasm should be pink to tan for the cytoplasm with violet or lilac granules. Ayan, lymphocytes, um, light blue cytoplasm, robin blue egg. Monocytes, gray ground glass cytoplasm with tiny red purple granules. Okay, and your eosinophil, it should um, be colored bright orange and your platelet should be purple to lilac cytoplasm. Hindi nakasama si basophil but please make sure na yung 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 double yung granules ni ano yung granules ni ni basophils is from purple to black. Nearing black na yung color ng ng basophils, okay? So please remember all of those things and on box 16-1 Sir, do we need to read this? Yes, you need to read this. Um, so these are the usual problems and causes of a poorly stained smear. Okay, a poorly stained blood, a uh, poorly stained blood smear. Okay, poorly stained blocks, blood smear. So kunare RBCs are gray, so meaning to say, may problem yung yung ano mo yung yung buffer mo either alkaline or Yan, it's too alkaline. So, ayan, please read on box 16-1, everybody. Please read on um, box 16-1. So, all of these are the problems and the different causes for um, your poorly stained blood smear. So, ayan, let's go to the peripheral blood smear ex exa examination. So, first and foremost, uh, macroscopically, da, sabi nga natin, the color should be um, transitioning to pink to purple. Yung yung color natin, pink to purple. A bluer film, meaning to say may increased blood proteins yan, okay? Increased blood proteins such as in infection, inflammation, increase of plasma proteins, which we were just discussing last time in chemi clinical chemistry, and kapag meron kang multiple myeloma or RULU formation, Okay? Another thing that I want you to put it um, put down on your nose, a bluer film could also be expected if you use your heparin as anticoagulant. Okay? If you use heparin as an anticoagulant, wala siya sa PowerPoint, makikilagay na lang ako. If you use your um, heparin as an anticoagulant, you would expect a bluer, okay? A bluer, um, a bluer, color ng peripheral blood smear, okay? A bluer um, color ng peripheral blood smear. Why? Because to start with, everybody, okay, your heparin is actually um, acidic by nature, okay? It is a type of a glyco, um, 
glycosaminoglycan, okay, glycosaminoglycan, and it is acidic. Okay, acidic yung ating heparin. So, meaning to say, dahil acidic siya, anong color ang may impart sa kanya? Yung color ng basic dye, which is your methylene blue. Okay, which is your methylene blue. So, um, I will be entertaining questions by the end of the peripheral blood smear. So, um, that would be a few slides from now. Okay? A few slides from now. So, yan yun ha. So, grainy appearance. So, ano yung mga, pag, um, if your blood smear is grainy in appearance, meaning to say it has cold uh, hemagglutinin. Sir, where, where can we see cold hemagglutinin in cases of CAIHA? Your cold, uh, your cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia, okay? Your cold, your cold hemagglutinins in grainy appearance. Holes are all over the film if there is an increased lipid levels. A blue speck, okay? A blue speck at the feathery edge if you have a leukocytosis, okay? Leukocytosis or thrombocytosis, meaning to say, increase yung blood, ay increase yung WBC, at increase yung platelet count mo. That's why you have blue specks on the feathery edge. Okay? On the feathery edge. That is macroscopic. Meaning to say, hindi ka pa gumagamit ng iyong microscope. Okay? But now, let's go deeper and look into your microscope. Microscopically, okay, again, where should be the area that um, I should uh, optimally see? RBC singly distributed without overlapping with one another, that is your feathery edge or your zone of morphology. In your microscopic analysis, we call that the optimal assessment area. Okay, And where can you see the optimal assessment area? In your feathery edge. Okay, Please take note before anything else that if your blood film was focused under um, 10 times or 40 times objective, it is impossible to bring in uh, bring into focus under um, 100 degree, I 100 degree, 100 times magnification, okay? 100 degree magnification. So, bakit hindi po pwede kasi nga, di ba pag 100, that is already for oil immersion na, na part, okay? So, look at this one, okay? Look at this one. So, there is, um, there is a non-uniform distribution of red blood cells over the smear. Dito. Kung makikita nyo, um, this is the side. Okay, can you see this? Can everybody, can I see lang? Can everybody see the picture? Can I see a raise of hands? If everybody can see the pictures in here right now. Okay, so here, if you're gonna look on this side of your peripheral blood smear, okay, and if you're gonna look at this side, you can see, na tingnan mo, you can actually see that dikit dikit yung RBC. I cannot even identify if I'm if I'm looking at this one. You can simply just say ah my poikilocytosis. This one is Rolu formation. As you can see, your RBC was actually um, compressed with your with your white blood cells. These are all incorrect. You should not never ever look at this one. Okay? Kung mapapansin nyo, this is near the feathery edge already. This is the end of the feathery edge. But if you if you're gonna look closer on the farthest edge of your smear, kiwa hindi rin maganda yung morphology. So you have to look where every cell is like this. Okay, nakikita ba on the upper right? Every cell should be singly. Hindi naman singly na as in single na single end. Makikita mo merong iba dito, may nag overlap, but very minimal. Okay, very minimal. So one thing that you should also um, consider is that um, the RBC, I can see them singly and I can see the central pallor. Okay? I can see the central pallor of my RBC. So, this is the perfect one. Okay? Charan! Okay. The color, salmon pink for your RBC. So, you have your salmon pink on your RBC. You have your platelets over here. So, looking at this one, sir, pwede mo ba yung gawing assignment? Bilangin lahat ng platelets. Ayan, platelets to. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Sir, do we really count that in the laboratory? Yes. Okay, mga kapanalig sa paniniwala, binibilang mo yan isa-isa. Okay, that's why, okay, that's why you really have to, ano, you really have to master. 
Um, another thing that I would request everybody, no, please download all uh, download pictures of your white blood cells, of your platelet, and your RBC. Gawin mo siyang screen saver, okay? So tulungan niyo yung isa't isa, yun yung EIG story niyo hanggang matapos yung finals para memorize ninyo yung itsura ng mga cells ninyo. Actually, that's just really the way it is, eh. Alam niyo ba kami dati ng mga friends ko, hindi kami, dati kasi nung time namin, hindi pa, ang tanda ko ba masyado, yung Instagram, hindi pa siya hype na hype. So, di ba, during our free time ngayon, nag-scan tayo ng pictures ng ano, ng mga Instagram, yung sino mga pinafollow natin, kung, kung ayan, tulad ni Jericho, siguro si Jericho, si Lakit, nakita na nila yung 13th season, di ba? Yun na yung, yung 13th season na yung, yung sinecheck ninyo yung mga, yung feed ng 13th season ng, ng RPDR, di ba? Yun na yung, yung sinecheck nila. Pero, okay, I want you to, I want you to, re, to take this talaga, seriously. You can download pictures, tapos yun yung ano, yun yung panoorin ninyo. And yung pano, yun yung tignan ninyo every now and then. This would really help even in GenPath, in Histo, ganun yung ginagawa namin before. So moving forward, dal dal mo sir. Okay, let's go to the peripheral blood meal, uh, ble, peripheral blood film examination. The microscopic, okay, so at your um, times 10, okay, 10 times objective, which is 10 times objective, LPO, HPO, or uh, OIO. Nako ha, baka nakalimutan na tong part na to. 10 times, LPO, HPO, OIO, or scanner. Hala, hindi sumasagot. Bigyan ko kayo ng pop quiz sa ano, sa microscope. That is your LPO, correct? So LPO yan. So overall, um, you can see the overall film quality using your LPO. Ano yung ginagawa mo? You scan mo lang, scan, scan, ganyan, ganyan. If merong mga large artifacts, ayan, um, may fibrin strand, pag may mga large abnormal cell like blast, reactive lymphocytes, or even parasites, um, like in your malaria, kunwari yung mga pinag-aralan nyo kay Sir Jude and Ma'am Violi na mga parasite, you can, the, yung mga filarial worms, yung makikita nyo yan sa, ano, sa, sa peripheral blood smear. So, you can automatically, ano, you can, um, tawag dito, you can detect them immediately in your LPO. Remember ha, your blast, reactive lymphocytes, and your parasites can already be can already be seen in your LPO. Okay? In your LPO. You can perform here your snow plow effect na you just simply are going through the slide. Okay? Si dinadaanan mo lang siya. Okay? Pero wag mong gagawing snow plow effect yung pag-aaral mo ng HEMA kasi hindi mo pwedeng tinitignan-tignan mo lang yung letra sa libro at sa notes, hindi yun mang, that should not happen, okay? So moving forward, if you're gonna look now, okay, uh, on a greater magnification, take for example, 10 times or five, 50, 40 times or 50 times, take for, that is for your HPO, you are now selecting a correct area, okay? Selecting a correct area of the film in which you will start your differential count. Where do we do your differential count? We do your differential count for your WBC. Okay, your WBC differential count and to evaluate cellular morphology. And in this case, this is your, uh, in your HPO, 40 times to 50 times, you can perform WBC estimate. Okay, WBC estimate. So before I go to OIO, let just, um, have a quick um, recap. If I am using my LPO, I am checking the overall quality of my slide. Chinecheck ko kung maganda na ba siya, kung pasado na ba siya para sa akin. Another thing that you can see in your LPO are the three, the blast, reactive lymphocytes, and your parasites. Okay? The blast, reactive lymphocytes, and your um your parasites. When you go now to your HPO, preferably 50 times to 50 times magnification, what is your purpose? What is your purpose? To select. To select the area where you will be counting your WBC and where you will be performing 
your differential count. Yung pipili ka na ng tamang lugar. Okay? Ng tamang areas sa slide. And aside from that, in your HPO, you can already perform your WBC estimation. Okay? WBC estimation. What about your OIO this time? In your OIO, 100 times objective magnification, you would now start to see your RBC, your WBC, and your platelet morphology. Okay? Dito mo na makikita, okay, si, ang aking red blood cell, may central pallor na, na two-thirds. Okay? Two-thirds of the red blood cell is the central pallor. And then, I can see that it is colored salmon pink. And then, eventually, I can see that there it is by concave. Yung mga ganon. Okay? It is already by concave. Did somebody raise their hands? May nagtaas ba ng kamay? I didn't see that. So, ayan. So, ayan yung sa, uh, ano natin ha? In your HPO, you can perform your WBC estimate. In your OIO, you can perform your platelet estimate. Okay? Your platelet estimate. Okay? So, Let's go now to your, uh, I actually have like a few slides na lang. Kanina pa ako a few slides. So let's go to the WBC differential count. Okay, WBC differ differential count. Le in general, let's just make it simple and straight to the point. What do you do in WBC differential count? You differentiate what type of WBC are, have you seen in your peripheral blood smear. Remember that you have five. Um, types of WBC. What are those five? Chat box. Uh, faster. What are those five types of, ano, just give one. Ay, naghihintay ng plus one. Just, ano, just give one. You have neutrophil, okay, I can see monocyte, lymphocyte, and trial, like, neutrophils, eosinophil, basophils, Okay, what else? Sit, ayan. Muti ko lang sabihin, City Bank, kasi may nag-text sa akin, City Bank. Okay, so thank you so much. So those are the five types, okay? We have your neutrophil, okay? Neutrophil, eosinophil, monocyte, eosinophils, and basophil. Sir, bakit ganun yung order? May purpose ba kung bakit ganun mo siya sinasabi? Lagi ko siyang binabasa ng NL MEB. NL MEB. Why? That is the most abundant to the less abundant. Okay, neutrophil, most abundant, followed by your lymphocytes, and then your monocytes, and then your eosinophils, and the least of all the things that you can see is your basophils. Okay, it's your basophils. So, um, for your WBC count, okay, normal WBC count, ayan, 100 WBC differential. Lagi niyong tatandaan, sir, ilang WBC po ang kailangan kong bilangin sa WBC differential count? Ilang cells? Ilang WBC dapat? Ilan? Okay, yung una may plus one ulit sa, sa, sa quiz. Ay, yung isa lang itong pipiliin ko. Okay, yung pinaka-top ha, yung pinaka nandun sa unahang-unahan. So, pasalamat sa internet. 409. Pare-pare silang 409. Pero yung pinakauna yung kukunin ko. Kasi baka wala nang mag-quiz. Lahat kayo may puro plus point. Ayan. So, dito sa kabilang dako, sinong nauna dito? Si Miss Van, si Jericho, Miss Vanji, ang nauna sa kabila. So, dito naman, okay, si, J, si Jordan, okay, si Purpura. So, si Trombo, Trombocytopenic, Purpura. Okay, Jordan, Purpura for this side and um si Jericho okay so having said that okay so having said that you need to count a total of 100 wbc okay a total of 100 wbc so siguro magtataka kayo sir paano po yung ginagawa um you will count um in here okay the one that you can see here is your counter okay this is your counter um your counter here, okay, yung counter natin dito, ito yung ginagamit natin na pangbilang ng WBC. Okay? Pangbilang ng WBC. So, um, each of that, each button, kung makikita nyo dito, represent your lymphocytes, monocyte, neutrophil, eosinophil, and even your basophils. 
okay? Even your basophil. So, when counting your, when, have you discussed WBC differential count in the lab? Na-discuss na ba ninyo sa lab yung diff count? Okay. So, in your WBC diff count, ayan, meron siya, meron tayong iba't ibang, ano, iba't ibang process. Let me just check kung, ano, makapag-screen share ako. Ayan, wala siya here. So, um, I'll just, ano, I'll just add up na lang that and our other, ano. So, eto, si Cella Vision DM96. There are some, ano, right now, okay, there are some, uh, machines right now na meron na siyang built-in na microscope. I don't know if you discussed this in your AUBF, pero meron na ding, di ba, tinuruan kay nila Ma'am Rona, nila Sir Jude, on how you can read the crystals. Okay? Which is the envelope type, si, ka, si Kaox, di ba, yung mga amorphous urates, di ba, Amor, yung mga phosphates natin, you're, you're actually, yung mga coffin lead, mga ganyan, you're able to look at those in the, in the microscope. But now, um, with automation, meron ng automatic na, alam yung parang pinipicturean nila lahat ng WBC. To take for example, I run the blood of um, Las Puna. If I run the blood of Las Puna, all of her WBC will, ano, lahat ng WBC niya, pipicturean ng machine. And then you will just um, identify if those are reactive, if those are abnormal or if those are blast okay kung yun ay mga blast so having said that now okay let's move on so makikita niyo diyan ayan ito yung mga different wbc natin um hopefully um i'll be able to cover the wbc anomaly para talagang matapos natin yung hima um if not um we'll look for another date probably um, where I can, ano, either I'll put it on HEMA 2 or I can just have a makeup class with everyone. Okay? So, to summarize everything before we for we move forward, okay, so in phase 1, um, you have to always, ano, you have to always check the numbers and the descriptors generated by the testing um, and summarize using appropriate terminology. Okay? Uh, summarize according to ter um, appropriate terminology, which I will be showing shortly. And then you have to, ano, you have to recognize a certain pattern of the results per disease. Because there are mga disease na ano, um, there are certain diseases that would actually um, have unique CBC feature, CBC um, results. Like take for example, if it is a bacterial infection, it it is neutrocyte. Um, it should be neutro. It will be neutrophilia. Okay, if it is bacterial infection. Pero if it is a viral infection, it is lymphocytosis. If it is allergic reaction, it is eosinophilia. Okay, eosinophilia. So those different, ano, those different um, terminologies are very important. So um, moving forward, okay, to still talking about WBC. So WBC parameters, we have, uh, we have three, three lang yan. We have three. We have the total WBC count, and we have your um, WBC differential count and your WBC morphology. The WBC morphology would focus more when we go to your um, WBC anomaly. Okay? Kasi meron ding iba't ibang shape yung mga WBC mo in different um, and abnormal situations. So let's um, talk about um, the, the total... Um, the total WBC count. The total WBC count would reflect if it is if you have leukocytosis or leukopenia. Okay? If you have leukocytosis or leukopenia. In your WBC differential count, you we have two types of count. Okay? Makikitandaan po ako. We have two types of count. The relative and the absolute. Okay? The relative and the absolute. So, anong pinagkaiba ng relative at saka sa absolute? I will say it in Tagalog para mas maintindihan natin. Pag sinabi mong relative, the relative doesn't ultimately reflect the state of your body. It's it's just relative. What do you mean it's just relative to the observation that was made? Why relative to the observation that was made? Imagine this. Okay? There is 5,000 
people in a particular area. And then I would, sabi ko, um, I will count how many, how I will, I will count how many boys and girls there is in the, there is in the stadium. So, kunwari, I will just relatively count it. Anong gagawin ko? I will only count the first 100 tao na makakasalubong ko. Nagigets ba ako dun sa scenario na, gina, na sinasabi ko? So, take for example, for this particular, ano, um, in my relative count, nakita ko na mas madaming babae, ay mas madaming lalaki kesa sa babae. Kasi yung nabilang ko, um, 60 yung lalaki, 40 yung babae. Okay, 60 yung lalaki, 40 yung babae. So re- that is my relative count. But if eventually, when I did the absolute count, I was actually able to realize that out of that 5,000, 1,000 are only, are, 1,000 are men, 4,000 are women. Nakigets nyo ngayon yung point ko with the relative and absolute. Sometimes relative depends on what it, what type of cell did you first um, saw on your microscope. Kung nari, pinakita mo ang neutrophil, ang neutrophil ulit, ang neutrophil ulit, pero hindi mo na-realize, um, that is just a relative. That is just relative. Okay? That is just relative. Okay? Relative lang siya. So, um, among the, between the two, which is the most accurate, your absolute counts. Okay? But what are we doing in the laboratory are usually your relative counts. Okay? Relative count. That's why relative counts are in percentages. So, bakit percent ulit? Bakit percent? Kasi 100 yung binilang mong WBC. Yung absolute count, kung makikita mo, times 10 raised to the 9th power per liter already. And of course, you also do, will check your um, WBC um, morphology. And then, ayan. So, these are the usual, ano, these are the usual um, terminology in the decrease and increase of your um, WBC. You have neutrophilia, neutropenia, eosinophilia, basophilia, um, lymphocytosis, lymphopenia, monocytosis, and monocytopenia. Question. Okay? We didn't discuss WBC already. Okay? We didn't discuss WBC already. Um, why is it that we do not have uh, why is it that we do not have what do you mean na sir hindi po ba neutrophils mauuna saan to which part is this right yung kanina po sir nauna po si lymphocytes tas nasa dulo po ng basophils si neutrophils where is it out? yung nasa slide niyo po Sabi niyo po kasi from the... Ah, no. um, um, okay, okay. Same thing, same concern tayo. Meron, may, may, I don't know if, sin, hindi ko maalala sin nag-email din sa akin with regards sa immunoglobulin. Um, sometimes what I am saying sa inyo, ha, uh, like take for example dito, hindi ko si, uh, eto, arrangement lang yan sa picture. But kanina, di ba, I was mentioning to you, ako, personally, when I memorize the WBC, I measure, I memorize it N... L, nakalimutan ko tuloy, NL MEB, NL MEB, so neutrophil lymphocytes, so I would, st- neutrophil pa rin ang most abundant, okay, it's just the picture, okay, ang my problem, so actually the problem yung picture, I was just saying to you guys, na I was just sharing how I memorize it, para kahit kunwari, ayan, do not get confused with that, kahit kunwari hindi ko alam yung normal, yung normal values, Basta alam ko, pinakamarami si neutrophil. Mga ganun. Okay? So, relative count, yeah, the representation, um, the represent, the relative count is the, repre, um, is, ref, is actually um, affected by your observation, which is the first one you observe. Ang absolute talaga, um, that is the actual representation of the absolute. Absolute na nga eh. Kung maga pinakatama. Okay? Absolute truth, absolute count. Okay? So, having said that, where was I? Here. Okay. I was asking, why is it that we don't have terms such as um, eosinopenia and basopenia? So, can anyone, okay, can anyone explain why do, why don't we have such 
um, terminologies. Okay, may nag-raise ng hands pero hindi ko makita. Wait lang. Talma lang, Pete. Okay, ay may nag-chat pala. Okay, ayaw nila mag-raise ng hand, nag-chat na lang po sila. Okay, ang sagot. Okay, pinaka-onti na. Ayan, pinaka-onti na. May question mark kasi yun eh. Masyado na maliliit yung concentration nila. Rarely observe na, uh, yung count nila. Difficult to count. Too small amount to determine decrease. And ito, kabilang dako naman tayo. Sagot nila here. O, O3 and O4 um, because already decrease in the blood smear, normal person, mababa talaga, uh, mababa ang sa normal dahil low po talaga ang count nila, konti talaga sila, okay? And sometimes di po na, nakikita sa peripheral blood smear, correct? So there are, there may be, there may be no to low count of eosinophils and basophils, which is true, okay? Those are all correct, Okay? Because your eosinophils and your basophils only increase during certain conditions, okay? Um, and their decrease is, ayan, okay? I like the terminology of Ms. Avedra. Yung decrease ng eosinophils at ng basophils mo is not clinically significant, specifically if it is relative count, okay? If it is your relative count, okay? So thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so tama ang inyong mga kasagutan. So, moving forward, okay. I'll give you an example. Okay, I'll give you an example here. So, looking at this one, okay, looking at this one, kita ninyo, everybody, kita ninyo, this is your WBC count. And you have your relative differentials and your absolute differential count. Okay? So, here, pag tinignan natin, ah, okay, relative, all are within normal range, uh, with all are within reference range, rather, within reference range, but when you counted it um, absolute na, you, when you did your absolute count, you actually was able to see that there is an elevated neutrophil. And we call it your absolute neutrophilia. Sir, ibig sabihin po ba may relative neutrophilia? Yes. Take for example, you have increase in the relative count, but normal in the absolute. You would you would need to say if it is relative or absolute neutrophilia, okay? So how would I be able to see? How, how would I be able to know that? Take for example, you gave us a diff count, and then I would I do not know if it is rel. I know that it is neutrophilia, but I don't know if it is absolute or relative. Anong titignan mo para malaman mo if it is an absolute or a relative? Absolute or relative? What will I look? Uh, what should I look at? Okay, correct. It's the unit, okay? Check the unit, mommy, okay? Para lang yung label, okay? So, check the label. Check the label, check the units, okay? So, okay, pardon me for disappearing because I just have to um, plug in the charger. So, having said that now, okay? Having said that now, ha, konti na lang, kaya natin to. Having said that now, um, let's now summarize, okay? Let's now summarize this one, ha? Um, is this normal? This is elevated. So makikita ninyo, may leukocytosis siya, and then may absolute neutrophilia. Sir, are you gonna give us such examples in the exam? I will, okay? I will. But, sir, do we need to memorize pa the, ano, the... Do we need to memorize pa the normal value? The question, the answer is, of course, no. Okay? Hindi na. Okay? No need anymore. So I just want you to have an idea which is the most abundant to the least abundant. But with regards to the normal values, I will not um, ask you to do that today or rather this semester. Okay? Hayaan ko na yung sa, pag nag-boards kayo, sa kanya na siya memorize okay so moving forward okay so um as i end okay as i end we finish the R, the wbc na okay we finish the wbc and now we're actually entering your rbc parameters so we have your R, rbc count your hemoglobin your hematocrit your means your mcv mch mchc rdw 
Okay? And all of those things we're gonna discuss um, shortly. But before that, let me just answer some questions. So I'll be ending the presentation for now. Okay? I'll be ending the presentation for now. Um, and then... I would entertain some questions muna before we proceed with the red blood stems, okay? Before I proceed to the red blood stems. So, one moment. Let me just stop the recording. So, thank you so much, guys, for listening for that first part.